Welcome back, it's the Lockdown on PushTheButton.ie and the Lockdown.ie. Thanks so much for watching the videos, really appreciate it. Like, share, subscribe and enjoy them. We've got a good one today. I've known this DJ and producer for quite a long time. You'll know his music, but do you know much about him? Let's get deep with John Gibbons. <laughs> John Gibbons, how are you, fella? Stephen Cooper, I'm good, how are you? Yeah, fantastic, thanks very much. Thanks so much for coming on the lockdown. I uh, really appreciate it. We know how busy uh, you were due to be, but uh, obviously with producing music, uh, are we finding you in the studio quite a lot now? Yeah, I'm in the studio a lot. Obviously no gigs and we don't know when they'll be coming back. So the trick for me is to think outside the box, to remain positive and to see the silver lining in the cloud that is above us in terms of work and try and be as creative and productive as possible. So while the job, if you like, is gone, the work continues. The work does continue. And um, how are you personally coping with all of this? Um, pretty okay, like, I'm not gonna lie, it was tricky at the start and I have good days and I have bad days and the, the uncertainty is the one for me that kind of tends to get me down a little bit. Now, luckily I'm mentally equipped to deal with those downs, you know, so th there aren't too yeah. many ups and downs. It's more of a kind of even keel, thankfully, but um, it's the uncertainty. It's not knowing when there will be an income again. It's not knowing when I get back in front of crowds, which is life. In every interview, I talk about my lifeblood in terms of what I do. And that really is the live side of it. I love production. I love being in the studio, but I love gigging even more. And it's what I did before I ever started to make music. So I'm really, really missing that. And I'm struggling to kind of I'm looking at the, the, the now empty calendar and what was in it and there were some really good gigs and some breakthroughs and a lot of really good stuff internationally happening this summer, which isn't going to happen now, but the positive yeah. side of it is it frees up a lot of time to create more music so that when the gigs do come back, I'll be more than ready and I'll have lots and lots of new material for people to hear and the releases won't stop, we'll still release music over the course of yeah. the months, a big new single coming very soon. So for me, it's really just about keeping up here in line within here and trying to become more than the sum of my parts and not to disconnect head from heart which sounds a bit esoteric but it's very very important because yeah. th there is kind of a there's a spiritual aspect to everything that i do just on a personal level aside from work and i'm very kind of holistic in the way i see my own health so it's mental health it's spiritual health and it's physical health and for me they all come together so i can't do one without the other two or even two without one they all come as a package so it's to make sure that i don't neglect any particular side of that so even at home nutrition is very important it always is it's not to neglect that though to make sure i'm eating the right foods to make sure that i'm still reading which is something i really like to do that i've got downtime and that it's not just all about trying to kind of find alternative ways it's not just about work it's got to be about life as well you know so it's yeah. tricky and it's challenging but Look, a challenge is a good thing, and we'll all come out, those of us to, who, who do kind of rise to the challenge, will come out stronger than we ever were. Yeah, and I suppose as well, it's nearly like re having to, like you mentioned, having to think differently and nearly reinventing yourselves, mm -hmm. which is nearly what you've done uh, from your early career to where you are now, because your music style has changed quite a bit, hasn't it? Well, it has, like, and I've always been quite adaptable, and I've always planned to adapt. So, I mean, when I started DJing, I was DJing at weddings, 21sts, uh, parties of friends, you name it. Then I graduated to bars, then to nightclubs. But at the time, it was all kind of commercial stuff. It was all pop music. Um, mm. And I always had one eye on dance music as well because I was huge into that. And I started to straddle the two and I started to promote events. And then my music gradually changed over the years from being very, very underground and very kind of techno oriented to trance. And now it's the more commercial pop side of dance music which for me is the most fulfilling because I get to scratch multiple itches at once if you like. I've always been into pop music, I've always been into the charts, I've been into radio and again I've been into dance music too. So I remember when I first started to see the likes of David Guetta and Calvin Harris emerge on the scene it was like manna from heaven, it was like that validation that I needed to go after that prize 
because yeah. it suddenly became acceptable to do. I always had this kind of mistaken belief that you couldn't combine dance music and pop music and you just had to keep things in boxes and genre based. And that totally flew in the face of the kind of glass ceiling that those guys shattered for me in terms of my perception of things. And it was like, right, go get it now. And I started to learn again. So to come back to what you originally said in terms of adaptability, I've always been quite adaptable. It's always been part of what keeps me interested. And this is just another part of it. You know, it's just trying to find different ways to be adaptable again. So I've done a lot of different things professionally from radio to commercial gigs to promotion to dance music and the bigger gigs and what it is I do now. So this is just another part of the journey. And if you can't enjoy the journey, the goal is never going to be attainable. Yeah. Um, when it comes to gigs now, uh, a lot of DJs on, uh, are doing online gigs as well. So I know that uh, you were involved with one of the uh, uh, clubs online for the Frontline. You've done one of those sets already, mm -hmm. haven't you? Yeah, I've done one of those. And, uh, it was really successful and there's lots more yeah. coming as well. Yeah, no, there is. Uh, I'm going to be on one of them. Yay. <laughs> really excited about it. Yeah. Um, and I, when, you, when you spoke earlier on about, you know, being in front of the live crowd, it's so much different. Like I've done a couple of online sets and uh, w when you don't get the reaction to the crowd, you, it's very hard to get into it, do you feel? Really, really tough. And you know what? It brings me right back again to when I started DJing because I remember so many horror gigs in front of like 10 people, 15 people. Um, doing a 21st for someone who was unpopular and nobody turned up to it, that type of thing. And I remember a trick that somebody, I'm not joking, there were some really, really horror shows. And I remember a trick that somebody told me when I started off DJing, uh, somebody who was much wiser than I was in the ways of crowds and how to stay motivated when you didn't have one. Because I've no problem mm. playing in front of a crowd. The bigger the crowd, the better, because I feed off it. And you can, I'm sure, relate yeah. to the same thing. Um, but that, that little mini lesson, it took a long time to sink in was, whether you've got 10 people in front of you or 10,000, react the same way or act the same way because it does become acting when you're not necessarily motivated um, in terms of an interaction with a crowd. Pretend that you do. It's almost like fake it to make it because that then rubs off on those who have all eyes on you. So you might have 10 pairs of eyes on you. They're expecting you to treat them in the same way as if there were 10,000 people around them. They're not going to discriminate. Yeah. They're there to be entertained, irrespective of how many people are there with them to be entertained. So they're the ones that turned up. They're the ones that turned <laughs> up, you know, and you have yeah. to have equal respect. You don't just respect a crowd because there are a lot of them, because you've got all these individuals within the crowd that make up the crowd, you know, so it's every drop in the ocean. And I found that once I could get it into my head that this is a big crowd and it deserves to be treated at a big crowd, once I kind of got five or ten minutes into a set of, of pretending, if you like, that this is the greatest buzz ever and the greatest crowd of all time, well, all of a sudden, it started to be that way in my head. It really genuinely did. And I'm treating the live sets online in the same way. So I find once I'm kind of five or ten minutes in, and I generally do a bit of a warm-up for myself before we go live, so that I'm already yeah. in the zone, if you like, mentally. And it just becomes... A different animal for me and I do find myself self-motivating then in the way a crowd would motivate me and it becomes fun and I'm not going to lie it's not an easy thing to do hence the warm-ups I really have to yeah. kind of shift my state of mind and my mentality but it is completely doable and luckily I have that experience from years ago when I was starting out of practicing that so it's almost like slipping back into that mindset and it's really really helped me to enjoy the live sets because if I'm not enjoying what I'm doing there's no point doing it at all. That's one of the mantras that I always preach for uh, some of the younger guys who are up and coming and ask me for some advice. It's always enjoy what it is you're doing, whether it's playing ABBA to a crowd of 10 people at a 21st or a party, or whether it's playing the latest banger from Alan Fitzpatrick in front of a festival for 20,000. Enjoy what you're doing. Always do that. Otherwise, you're better off finding something else to do. That's really good advice. What about anybody who is looking to get into DJing and in particular production? Uh, what advice uh, would you give them? Um, I'd say, well, again, love what it is you're doing. So find something that really motivates you when, when you don't have a crowd. So let's say you're starting off and you don't have the first clue about what to do. Well, I would say hmm. musically, it's, it comes down to the music always. So the music has to be the foundation of the bedrock of what you do. So find the music that you love. Doesn't matter what it is. It doesn't matter if it's the most commercial, popular style music. It doesn't matter if it's the most obscure niche thing. Don't think about markets. Think about what makes you happy and what motivates you. Because when you're learning, it can be quite difficult. So for some people, it's easier than others. 
But let's say yeah. you're, you're one of the people that finds it a challenge in the initial stages. You know what you want to do, but you don't necessarily know how to get there. If you enjoy what it is you start to do, things become easier much more quickly. So I would say, let's say you want to you want to learn how to DJ and you don't have access to someone who can show you the ropes or teach you or whatever it is, especially now because people don't. Get onto something like YouTube, find some tutorials that are linked to the music that you like. And there are so many tens of thousands of tutorials out there. Loads, and yeah. Keep it simple at the start. So the first thing is how to combine songs to beat match. How It's the actual skills. Learn those, but always surrounded by the music that you like. And then you can look at the more kind of elaborate things. I, I find one of the mistakes that a lot of guys start off with setting out now in this multimedia reality that we're in is they'll get a logo first and they get a press release first and they'll get their mate to be their manager before they do before they've acquired any of the skills acquire the yeah. skills first and don't try and run before you can walk because it can then if you've got the package it can become very demoralizing and demotivating if people aren't responding then to the mm. product and I don't mean that in a commercial sense but the product is the music that you put out there the DJ sets that you start to put online don't worry about fancy backgrounds don't worry about the coolest looking studio in the world at the beginning none of that matters when you're learning the ropes and ultimately people will respond to the music the rest are just bells and whistles and frills without the actual product or I mean to get esoteric again about it without the heart foundation the head is of no use to you so get the basics right first it doesn't matter whether it takes you five years, 10 years, five minutes, 10 minutes. Production, for me, wasn't a natural thing. Gigging mm. is always a really natural thing for me. For some reason, it just clicked from the get-go. But when it came to production, I had to really, re and I still have to work really, really hard at it. I exposed myself to as many people who were better than me as possible. I still do. Collaborative work is really, really important in that regard. Um, and don't be afraid of hard work. I'm really glad that I decided not to use ghost producers, i.e. people who would make the music for me in the beginning, yeah. and that I always learned. Because even though it took me much, much longer than it did some of my contemporaries and some of my friends who started out around the same time as me, in terms of production, it meant that I was adaptable. I was able to find a groove for myself that could change gradually over time. And I was able to do it for myself. So while I saw a lot of other guys kind of fall by the wayside, when the people that they were relying on to make the music for them no longer wanted to do that, I was mm. able to adapt. So while a lot of people's kind of career graph or trajectory went like that, mine was slower, but it continued on past that, you know, and, and that's not to big myself up. That's just because I wasn't afraid of the graft and the hard work. So for every facet of what we do that we really enjoy and flows very quickly, there'll also be much, much harder things that we need to do and sometimes need to find alternative ways to get that motivation. So don't be afraid of them. Embrace them as well. What, how do you f what's your opinion of ghost producers? Uh, do you feel like if just say Bob down the road decided he wants to become an international superstar DJ and play all the big festivals and he gets a ghost producer, the song is a huge success and then he appears up on stage and he's banging them out, getting paid loads. What's your opinion on ghost producers uh, and people, well, more people actually using them and uh, writing the coattails on it? Um, well, I, I don't have a problem with it. It's each to their own. Everybody's free to do whatever it is they want. It wasn't the road I went down for reasons I've already explained, but I don't have a particular, I mean, I don't dog ghost produ producers or people who choose to use them. I don't have a problem mm. with people doing it. I just think that people who decide to do that need to be aware that it's a very good idea to ha have a plan B. So, I mean, let's see if I can come up with some sort of analogy. Um, let's say somebody while they're in school has a job on the side. They're, wor they're working for their dad as uh, whatever it might be. Let's just pluck something out of the air, a builder. And they realized yeah. that, OK, I'm, I'm making some good money at the weekends here. My plan was to uh, to go to college and do something else that I was really, really passionate about. Let's make up something again. Let's call it a doctor, for example. Always wanted to be a doctor. I'm making good money, though, at the weekends with my dad. And then I reach 18, I finish school and I get my leaving cert and I get offered a course in wherever to become a doctor. Hmm. Now... I also have this other option available to me, and that's to use the skills that I've acquired to make money straight away. So I decide, right, I'm going to take a year off, earn some money, build up a bit of a bit of money to become a doctor and to go to college and pay for myself or whatever. There is a temptation there to neglect the passion in favor of the money. 
that being say right. the job with dad and I think it's very important not to take the eye off the prize because it's very easy then to slip into a routine whereby because of a bit of money coming in now I need to pay the bills because I've got used to a particular lifestyle and abandoning the dream I think it's very very important to stay motivated by the G- by the dream whilst maybe dipping into the other so maybe stay doing the work at the weekends while you're doing college during the week so what I'm saying in terms of ghost production is maybe you can use a ghost producer to give you that leg up to give you the head start but don't neglect the side of it that being the hard work the actual learning of the ropes because some ghost producers are very willing to sit down with whoever it is they're working for and actually teach at the same time so I think for somebody who my advice would be for somebody who is determined to kind of take a fast track to getting in front of the crowds that they want to be and they don't necessarily want to go down the route that I did of the longer term gigs well then maybe a ghost producer is the way to go but I would say always 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 learn the ropes while you're doing it don't just neglect it otherwise it's always going to be a short-term career for you I mean there's a very diff- uh, big difference between being successful short term and having a long career I mean would somebody like to make a load of money for two years or would they like to make presumably a little less money but to gradually build up and build up and have a career that lasts 20 30 40 whatever years because I mean you're not going to DJ forever but you can branch out into other things and have a plan B and a plan C so it's keep your eye on the prize keep the eye on what you what it is you want to do not just in the now the now is extremely important it's the most important thing I mean we've past present and future for me present is always the best place to be but keep an eye on the future at the same time know where it is ultimately you want to go and do set long-term goals because while it can be very tempting to neglect those in favor of the buzz that the present or the now can sometimes give us ultimately those 10 years are going to catch up very very quickly and we need to know that we've been working towards that so when we reach there we're in a place that we want to be and not looking back on what was and getting depressed about the past You've some head on you. Do you know that? <laughs> no, I don't know. I mean, maybe very, I just talk too much, Steve. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's pretty good, sound, level-headed advice, which is which is what we like. Right, listen, before we wrap this up, we have a couple of questions for you, all right? Mm-hmm. Uh, we're looking for three tips on surviving the lockdown, maybe hacks or anything like that, stuff that you've found to do and uh, that are kind of useful um, to cope through all of this. Okay, um, good question. I don't feel on the spot at all here. Um, okay three things that I have done um, that that, that have really helped me and put my head in a place that it normally wouldn't be is number one to cook every single day and to try and cook in a more meaningful way now you're thinking what what cook what are you talking about do you know what I'll do I'll do this in reverse I'll give you the three things that I've done at the end but I'll tell you why I'm doing them number one that might make a bit more sense because As I've kind of hinted at, in adversity there's opportunity. So rather than seeking distractions, I've decided to do something positive that improves me in some tiny way every day without fail. That's the key to it, the consistency. So what have I been doing that I normally haven't been doing? I focused on home in that regard. So rather than work in studio or whatever, I focused on number one, cooking. So that's to cook every single day and not just cook whatever's in the press, to actually pick a recipe no matter how difficult or easy it is and trust me they've been easy so far but to try and progress (laughs) so I picked a recipe every single day and decided in the morning I'm going to do that if I don't have the ingredients I go out and I do my state mandated shop and I buy the ingredients that I need and I found it's been not just educational I've also found despite one or two disasters that I've been eating better as a result and enjoying my own cooking far more But I found that it's been somewhat therapeutic as well because it gets my head out of my thoughts and I have to really concentrate on something that's outside my comfort zone. The second big one is cleaning at home. It's tidying, it's cleaning, it's it's mopping the floor. You know, I, I would neglect mopping the floor or, heaven forbid, here's a confession, get a cleaner once a week to do those type of things. I'm pretty good at keeping my environment tidy. I'm not so motivated when it comes to cleaning and doing the nitty gritty. So... Um, in the absence of that I've taken on that as another challenge and the other one is to read more I've always been an avid reader but I've started reading books that I wouldn't normally read so I've all these books that I've always meant to read sitting on the bookshelf 
and now I'm actually sitting down and reading them. So I'm not reading as much for entertainment or for escapism. I'm, I'm still doing that, but I'm reading at least a couple of chapters of a book that I normally would be intimidated by or wouldn't have read in the past every single day um, alongside meditation, which I know, I've known the values of that. I've benefited from it over the years, but it's always been a chore. And I've been doing that actively every single day, not for hours every day, just for 10 minutes, and just tried to let my thoughts disappear and focus on breathing or a single thought in my head or whatever it might be. So that's three rather than four, and they're very personal to me. So it's cooking, cleaning, reading, and meditating. But I found the challenge and the discipline of doing that every single day has really, really helped my headspace, number one. But it's also shown me that I can improve in so many different ways in my life, not just when it comes to work, because the focus is work for me and relationships with people around me and that side of things but there are all these other things that feed those so I found I'm more relaxed in work because rather than going home and trying to escape from stress i.e. plonking in front of TV I don't really watch TV much at all but rather than plonking in front of TV or doing something distracting I'm doing some, something productive which in turn becomes therapeutic educational and in no way intimidating anymore I'm seeing the benefits as it becomes a habit over time so that's the long-winded response to what possibly should have been a short-winded um, question and answer. But I found it really, really <laughs> transformative for me. <laughs> God, I don't know if we've time to get through the rest of the questions. <laughs> I'm sorry, Steve. I mean, <laughs> of all the guests, why did I pick John? <laughs> John's like, oh, there's somebody to talk to. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. OK, I'll tell you what, we'll do, we'll do the last question that we usually do in this. So, um, OK. And that is, who would you love to be locked down with and why? Um, I'd love to be locked down with, and this is for purely selfish reasons, the weekend. I'm often asked who would I like to collaborate with work-wise. And for me, the dream living person at the moment to collaborate with is the weekend. I just absolutely mm. love his voice. I love pretty much everything he does musically. And I think that what he does would lend itself really, really well to what I do as well. Obviously, he's yeah. kind of at the top of the pedestal there. It's a dream scenario, but why not shoot for the stars and maybe you'll hit the moon? So if I could be locked down with somebody right now, it would be the weekend, and I think we'd make some really, really good music together. And, I mean, that's what I want to do yeah. when I'm in work. So it's, it's to be the best and he'll, he'll probably be. he'll probably enjoy your cooking as well. <laughs> Well, I don't know. He's probably used to personal chefs and things like that. I'm not at this stage just yet. But at least he'd have a clean environment and he would get away from me at the end of the day when I go off to do my meditation for 20 minutes. So he wouldn't have to listen to me all day long. <laughs> Well, listen, we're going to let you go and do your meditation now. Uh, John Gibbons, thank you so much. Very best to look with the rest of uh, the music that you create. And we cannot wait to hear uh, what new bits and pieces that you got up your uh, wizard sleeves there. And uh, stay safe, buddy. <laughs> Nobody has ever described me as having wizard sleeves before, but hey. <laughs> Double entendre, I'll give you that one, Steve. Listen, thanks a million for having me. I'm really enjoying the new podcast. I can't believe how quickly you're getting through episodes. The content is so varied and different every time. And I think it's great. So uh, kudos to you as well. Thanks a million for having me. Thanks very much, buddy. What a gent. And also really good advice for anybody who's uh, stuck in the DJ situation at the moment and not seeing any light at the end of this tunnel. Also, if you're looking to get into music production and making tunes, some really good advice there from John. Thanks for watching. Hit subscribe and we'll see you next time. Stay safe.